Michelle Sutter, thank you very much for allowing us this time to talk about the issue that is very important to all of us, including you. Um, talk about yourself first. Who are you? Um, I'm Michelle Sutter. I uh, co-founded an organization called Money Out Voters In, which is dedicated to a 28th Amendment to our Constitution to overturn Citizens United and the other applicable judicial precedents, which go back uh, a fair bit. Um, and in that capacity, I um, began to work through the California legislature to put a ballot measure uh, on the ballot statewide in California that would be a voter instruction to ask Californians um, if they want their representatives to act on their behalf uh, towards this end. Um, Washington State, as you know, has this on the ballot also this year, I-735, and they signature gathered their way onto the ballot, which is not actually something we could do in California. Um, signature gathering to, towards an advisory measure or a voter instruction was actually outlawed by the Supreme Court. Um, it's a fascinating case, really, uh, uh, that involves our old nemesis, the Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association. It's rather complicated, but the end result is that at this point, um, if Californians are interested in placing a voter instruction on the ballot, it does have to go through the legislature. The downside to that is that signature gathering is a tremendous way to educate voters yes. um, as you gather those signatures. So that's not something we did. Um, we did involve tens of thousands of Californians in our push through the California legislature twice. We had to do it in 2014 and then again in 2016, um, but educating the broader electorate about the fact that we're on the ballot and what the issue is and what this ballot measure has the capacity to do uh, is something that we very much need to address now, and it's why I so appreciate sitting down with you, Mansoor. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to get to Prop 59, but let's talk about a movie, Money Out Voters In. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we began to organize um, in 2011. Uh, the Citizens United ruling came down in, in January of 2010, as you know. Yes. And part of the strategy for raising awareness and getting this movement going towards an amendment was uh, to empower uh, local activists to work through their city councils or county commissions or whatever the appropriate body was to pass resolutions calling on the Congress to draft and pass a resolution and return it to the states. Uh, so we began to organize around that issue and in December of 2011 the Los Angeles City Council became a, the largest city to pass such a resolution. Um, it was passed overwhelmingly and we began to learn about um, how to write and speak effectively about this issue, how to lobby our representatives effectively about this issue and um, subsequent to that uh, one of the things that I learned, which I hadn't known, um, was that there are a lot of good government groups and organizations who understand broadly the uh, issues and problems associated with the vast sums of money that Citizens United unleashed into the process, but there is a fair amount of uh, disagreement about how best to address those concerns. Um, and so we began to think about um, educating ourselves and educating others and I believe that was where I met you was yes. when we organized um, our first MOVI conference in November of 2012 uh, at the UCLA Law School. Um, it was called um, a 28th Amendment question mark uh, remedies solutions you know the idea was let's have this conversation about do we need a 28th Amendment. Um, if we don't need a 28th Amendment, what are the other possible solutions? Um, and how do we organize uh, towards affecting those? Um, as you recall, we brought in 
all kinds of Great. extraordinary thinkers um, on this issue. Uh, everyone from Lisa Graves and Jeff Clements to Trevor Potter and yes. Marge Baker, Lynn Stout from, from Cornell who had been at UCLA, Adam Wexler, uh, of course UCLA professor um, who's written very convincingly on a, on a bunch of issues, the Second Amendment being one of them. Um, but uh, what I learned from that uh, was that, yes indeed, um, oh, Larry Lessig also. Yes. Um, yes. What I learned from that was that we very definitely did need a 28th Amendment. There are folks um, whom I have enormous respect for but disagree with who believe that this is something that we can address uh, legislatively and our experience um, both nationally and in California is that that is both extremely hard and also uh, would immediately be challenged in the courts and as long as the doctrines are in place that equate money with free speech uh, and give corporations the right to that free speech that no legislation that we might pass at this point would withstand the challenge given the 40 years of jurisprudential precedents that have threaded their way um, through our uh, legal system. So the, uh, you know, one size fits all, um, yep. good today, good tomorrow, lasts forever is a 28th Amendment and we would not be in the position where you know we'll be playing whack-a-mole for generations, right? Where they you whack them here and they pop up over there, yeah. and 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 this is, uh, and as you know, uh, I believe this is the panacea. Um, all of the issues that we care about, uh, on which we see no movement, are all held in place by this corporate constitutional right structure, and that's what we've got to bust. Yeah. You mentioned Citizen United. I know a whole lot of people know about it, but just briefly, if you could talk about Citizen United case. Yeah, and in fact, what we're finding as we're going out and about and talking to people is that so many people do not know Citizens United. Um, they know that money in politics is a problem. Uh, they actually, our polling indicates some pretty surprising findings that people do directly connect corporate, consti uh, corporate contributions to political campaigns as having a direct impact on their lives, which is quite yes. remarkable. But they haven't heard of Citizens United, I believe, because the media doesn't talk about it and doesn't talk about our movement. So broadly what Citizens United did was to um, unleash floods and floods and floods of unrestricted money into our elections. Um, this whole, i.e., independent expenditure, super PAC universe uh, did not exist um, prior to that ruling. Um, money had to be counted for who's given it and how much. There, yes, and even the Citizens United ruling, I mean, Anthony Kennedy did say in that opinion that there would neither be corruption nor the appearance of corruption because there would be disclosure. Um, but as you know, here in California, uh, a wonderful man named Trent Lang in the California Clean Money Campaign has been trying to get a Disclose Act through the California legislature yeah. for, you know, six, seven, eight years. Yeah. Uh, and it dies on the very last day with, you know, a single vote missing year after year after year. Uh, so actually getting disclosure um, doesn't happen. Um, uh, many in our money and politics movement um, were uh, petitioning in and calling in and you know some people were meeting with staffers who are at a higher pay grade than than I am uh, which is zero <laughs> right as you know uh, I'm a volunteer um, but uh, to the president um, calling on him to uh, issue an executive order that would require companies benefiting from federal contracts to disclose their political spending would have been an easy enough thing for the president to do. Certainly disclosure for the people, um, but the president chose not to move on that. Um, and we find that ultimately uh, whatever legislative body we're pushing into ultimately decides um, not to disclose, not to move for disclosure, which is another reason why we believe that the constitutional amendment 
um, is so necessary and changes the game immediately, right? If corporations uh, are no longer allowed to contribute to campaigns, then our representatives are no longer beholden to them for money. Then our representatives can begin to make choices to satisfy the needs of their actual constituents, what we say will matter more to them than the corporations. And the other spectacular thing that begins to happen is that, you know, while corporations will be free to spend lobbying dollars and all that stuff to try and push their issues as, as they do now, um, at this point, they're the only people seated at the policy discussion table. And that table is the people's table. Yes. And they need to be pushed out of the room uh, while we, the people, talk about how we want to move forward. Um, and this is something that a 28th Amendment will accomplish for us.